I'm gonna make this video short and sweet. Uh, so I found this dresser on Facebook and it was pretty beat up and um, the bones of the dresser were still really good It was real wood. So I knew I could do something with it um, It just took a little bit of work So hopefully you guys are encouraged to do something like that if you're on a budget and you need to redo your bedroom Or if you're moving into a dorm and you just don't want to spend all that money to find some new furniture um, I think this will still be cheaper than IKEA and will probably look better Plus uh, you help not send all of this to the landfills, which is a big goal of mine uh, to just repurpose and reuse things that we have already so that we don't contribute to um, more waste. This world is already wasteful. So I'll show you how I did this. It took a little bit of elbow grease, but it can be done. I do have power tools and I really contemplated not using them just to show you guys how to do it, but I wasn't going to torture myself. So um, I'll tell you where you can exchange the hand tools if you have them and I'll just show you how it came out. I hope you enjoy it. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you at the end. Okay guys, this is what we're starting with. I really don't know what was going on with this poor guy. Maybe it belonged to a kid. Who knows? But uh, yeah, it's a little rough looking. We're going to start by, by stripping this. I could sand it, but stripping is a lot easier on your hands. Um, so I'm just going to apply the paint stripper on and let it sit and then start scraping it off. Luckily, the front, the top of it doesn't have any paint. It's just the front. So it'll be a lot less stripping. Like I said, I could probably sand it, but I really, really don't want to because I freaking hate sanding. You can use a chip brush for this, uh, something that you don't mind getting ruined and uh, make sure you apply a thick enough layer, especially if you're working outside because it will dry up quickly, but you're supposed to let it sit for about 15 to 30 minutes uh, for it to take effect. So I think I waited 15 minutes because I am impatient and I did not want to keep waiting, but I did test a little uh, spot to see if it was working and it was. So once it's sat there for a good while, you want to start scraping. Um, I'm using this one, uh, this spatula putty knife that I have. If you have something wider, like this plastic ones that you can buy for really cheap, that may uh, make your life easier since they have a wider uh, surface area that they cover and you can get by quickly. Make sure you go with the grain uh, so that you don't uh, leave marks on your piece of furniture. You always, always want to go with the grain. What we're gonna do next is we're going to wipe down the excess uh, with paint thinner. Uh, it's the instruction says to use mineral spirits, uh, which is pretty much the same thing. Now I'm gonna soak a rag into it, and I'm just gonna squeeze the excess and then use this toothbrush. If the moon. so I got the front of this drying because it needs to be completely dry otherwise it will gum up on your uh, sandpaper I tested it on one and let me, uh, let me get closer because the paint stripper wasn't completely dry it kind of gummed up on my sandpaper so I need to let those dry completely I am gonna get started on the rest of my dresser since I didn't put any paint stripper on this uh, it doesn't need to dry I'm just using my random orbital sander on this if you don't own a sander um, you can use a sanding block with sanding pads that you can just buy for really cheap and do that that might take quite a bit of time though so I would suggest that you use paint stripper on the entire thing to remove all of the varnish that it could have or sealer that it could have on top and then wipe it clean and then you can come back and sand just a little bit to remove any excess um, but that way you wouldn't be doing all of that sanding by hand the sun. change of plans i think i'm gonna use 80 after all and then i'm gonna do 220 With sanding paper, uh, the higher your number, the finer your grit. You always want to start with a lower grit, a uh, thicker grit, and then move on to a smoother one so that you don't leave marks on your furniture. 
And the next step is going to be very important. This is shellac and I use it to cover any, to block any udders or stain or tannings from the wood. Uh, especially if you're using a light color like white, sometimes wood tend to bleed through the tannings from the wood will show up through the paint. And the only way to do it is to prevent that is to block it. Shellac happens to be very good at that. Hi guys, it's No Makeup Blanca here. Uh, and my husband just destroyed the house. Uh -oh. <laughs> what was <Clamp>. that? <laughs> He's trying to clamp one of the drawers that is broken for this dresser, so we'll forgive him for that. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we moved inside because we are just not morning people, and so we usually work better like in the afternoon and evening. Uh, so yeah, so we find ourselves working until like 11 p.m. most of the time. Um, that's just who we are. Anyway, I'm going to do the first coat tonight because I want it to dry and then I want to do, hopefully finish it tomorrow. So I wanted to get that done today. I wanted to do white with a gray stripe. I want to do those, uh, what are they called? Grain sack stripes. And so I want something really neutral and I think that would be really good. Stripes are going to be Dixie Bell Gravel Road, which is a medium tone gray, probably like a dark gray. Anyway, I'll put my hair up. The struggle is real. <laughs> Who else has little clips with no teeth in it? Yeah, it's got two, so it still works, right? But sometimes I amaze myself. Why? What you do? Oh. So I wasn't lining up, so I had to press against it, so this wouldn't bow. Babe, but can you show my friends? No, because they don't understand. <laughs> They'll never understand what I just they did. They will! They want to understand! Here, I'll show them. Can I move it? Okay, so this is, this is what Corey was having a hard time with. Um, <laughs> so this drawer ah, cracked. Okay, so it was cracked from here. And he needed it to clamp it. Why was it cracked? Because I dropped it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so there was an unfortunate accident and this drawer was cracked and Corey just gluing it together and this part kept falling in, right? Because it, it, yeah. it didn't have any support. So Corey just ah, figure out to put this box here to offer some support on this side. So pushing from this side and pushing from this side to keep it straight. And this is genius, babe. So, yep. Now don't break anything else. Okay, so now that Biggie has inspected the dresser and we are good to go, we're gonna start painting. I'm gonna use uh, Dixie Belle Fluff, which is an off-white color. It is a white, but it's not quite as stark as other whites, so it's one of my favorite ones. Um, you'll see me here using a Worcester Shortcut Pearl uh, brush. You can find this at Home Depot, and then I always use a water sprayer, a fine mist sprayer, uh, because chalk paint tends to be a little bit thick. This helps it glide a little bit smoother, so you'll see me misting uh, anytime I paint something, I usually have a damp brush and I will mist the paint to help it glide a little bit faster and easier. And it also helps reduce the brush strokes, actually. Whenever uh, your brush glides really smoothly, that's when you have the least amount of strokes. In So next day I ended up sanding a little bit, a little patch there because I wasn't satisfied with it. So I'm going to repaint this and do a second coat on the entire thing. Same brush and same paint. If the moon... So now that the paint is dry, I'm going to sand, lightly sand the entire uh, piece of furniture just to remove any debris that may have gotten stuck on the paint as it was drying, especially because I was painting outside. Okay, so... I have painter's tape and I have frog's tape, frog tape. And so the frog tape is actually better for painting stripes because it gives you a crisp, a more crisp, a crisper line uh, than the painter's tape. So I'm gonna try that on. I'm gonna use painter's tape as a guide. Uh, you should probably measure this. I was using the middle of the handles as my reference and it fit quite perfectly. So I didn't feel like I needed to measure, although I did measure uh, some parts of it just to be safe. You don't want this to come out crooked. So do the best that you can ahead of time so you don't have to redo the whole thing. How are you gonna paint that? You gonna take the blue one up? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. The blue one is just for my thickness reference. So now the satisfying part of 
taking this tape off in the middle and leaving a straight line for me to paint. Just make sure you um, have secured the tape. Make sure you uh, press a little bit hard to make sure it's taken everywhere and nothing is going to leak under. And then I'm going to use my uh, Paint Pixie brush. This is a smaller one. You can use whatever brush you have. I just happened to have this one outside because I was working on other projects. Um, this is Dixabelle Gravel Road. It is a dark gray. I don't know if you guys have ever tried to paint straight lines, but it is really difficult to get them crisp and really straight. So this frog tape really is amazing. I wanted to show you guys how crisp that line is. Isn't that crazy? Like for real guys, 10 times better than painter's tape. Uh, so now I'm gonna make the other two thin stripes in here. Um, this is a grain sack stripe, so that means there's a thick one and a couple thinner ones on this side. And then go ahead and paint. There's going to be two coats of paint on all of this. So once it dries, you go ahead and do it again. Uh, don't let kitties get in the way because they don't work. So next I'm going to lightly sand uh, just to make sure the lines are really smooth uh, when they transition onto the paint and then I'm going to wipe off that excess. And for the next step we're going to touch up any parts that may have uh, some mistakes. It helps to have a small flat detail brush um, and then if you put the paint only on one side and scrape it off the other side so you can kind of lean it flat against the surface that you're working on and that will help you a lot. So I did the same thing with the white. And before I move to the sealer, I'm going to um, wipe off the excess dust from sanding. I have an air compressor, so I'm using uh, the air hose to do that. You can use a brush or wipe it down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start spraying. As you can see here, I am using Verithane's polyacrylic or polyurethane water base in a satin finish. That is one of my favorite ones and you can buy it at Home Depot or you can use any other top coat that you choose. Uh, if you have um, shellac and tire piece, there shouldn't be any yellowing. And also just make sure you go on thinner layers. You can also do this by hand if you don't have an air compressor. And this is how it came out, you guys. Uh, it went from looking so ugly and tired to looking nice and crisp and mod modern and minimalist. And I just love it. It can go with a French country style, with a farm rustic style, uh, minimalist style. Uh, you can do whatever you want with this. It's just paint. You just gotta, you know, put some work into it and um, the results are gonna be beautiful. All right, you guys, that is it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know there is a ton of DIY videos out there, so I appreciate you taking the time to watch mine. I hope that you learned something good. Um, and I want to encourage uh, younger people, especially, to try to do things themselves. Um, I feel like the younger generations are losing a lot of the DIY bug and um, it's a shame. There's a lot of cool things that were made by hand that were made with a lot of love and a lot of quality and attention to detail that may not be the case with machine made items. I'm not saying that anything new or from Ikea is bad at all. In fact, there's a couple things from Ikea that I think are awesome. But I want to encourage people to reduce waste. Um, there's a lot of this furniture that is just going into the landfills uh, because somebody doesn't know how to just paint it. And so I want to encourage people to do that for themselves. There's a lot of pride on finishing a project um, and just seeing the final product and knowing that you saved it from the landfill. So yeah, don't forget to subscribe and like and follow. I'm trying to post once a week and um, I have a business where I sell the furniture that I redo and hopefully you guys follow me along this journey. My husband and I are really excited to be working together and be doing this um, and hopefully we teach you guys something new every time. Bye guys, see you later. Was that you living in someone else's dreams?